This is a tale of two teachers, Mr. Ellison and Mr. Holmgren, and the paths they've followed through life. Steve Ellison has been teaching high school history and coaching football for more than 30 years. We're playing Casa next week. It's for the marbles. Mike Holmgren is the man who put the title back in title town. The Vince Lombardi Trophy is coming home. But it was Ellison who encouraged the coach to fight through the roadblocks and stay on Holmgren way. It all started back in San Francisco in 1972. Holmgren had been a star quarterback at Lincoln High School. He was the top player in the city and the guy that everybody talked about. Without question, the best high school quarterback I've ever seen to this day. But his career fizzled at USC. And after two failed NFL tryouts, the path Holmgren had chosen was at a dead end. I wanted to play professional football more than anything in this world. And uh, I prayed very hard about that. And then it didn't happen. Two and two didn't add up to four, and I, I didn't understand that. That's when Steve Ellison called. Holmgren's fellow Lincoln High alum was the head coach at Sacred Heart High School in downtown San Francisco and helped Holmgren get his first full-time job. I didn't start coaching high school football for the money. I was paid $300 for the whole year, and so it was about one, one penny an hour. You get in because it's something you love and something you want to do. Holmgren would serve as Ellison's assistant. The only team he would run was Sacred Heart's tennis squad. Of course, his primary responsibility was as a teacher. He started off teaching a class in mechanical drawing, and, and I'm not even sure how qualified he was for that. The thing that he always did very well was he made it fun. His classroom was a fun atmosphere. He had a little radio in the back of the, uh, the classroom that he'd play. Usually his country western station. No one was going to complain to him. I mean, he was so big. Holmgren could motivate through fear, both in the classroom and on the field. Well, he'd look at you, you and it was just, his face would get red, and his veins would pop out of his face. What did I just tell you on the sideline? Time out. I'll Take a time out immediately. You'd do whatever you wanted me to do. Yeah. Whatever you wanted you to do, you'd do yeah. it just because you Intimidating guy. <laughs> it, really, it really is. Hidden beneath the iron fist was a heart of gold. Mechanical drawing, you had to have a set of compasses, you had to have certain pencils, you had to have a, a lot of equipment. And my parents at the time just, you know, six kids was kind of tough. My mom had told them, you know, she's attempting to get it, but she hasn't had a chance yet. And I remember he took me aside after uh, back to school day, and Coach Holmgren gave me the complete set. You know, I always think about that aspect of him, that he was pretty compassionate. Yeah, I think he liked the underdog guys. He I mean, the, the guys that weren't so popular as he, who he would really shine with. Yeah. Yeah. Thank goodness, because we sure had some underdog football teams. So it was good <laughs> that he good. Tiny Sacred Heart was rarely a favorite. Even though the Irish played their home games in Kizar Stadium, the longtime home of the San Francisco 49ers. When we played here at Sacred Heart, this is where we came from. The locker rooms were inside the tunnel, and coming out of the tunnel, the kids could hear the echoes. We all had the goosebumps. And this is where some of the greatest football players that ever played entered this stadium. I was telling somebody the other day uh, just the names of the, of the guys that, that played on the other teams. Yeah. Fouts, Swan. Yeah. Names of people everyone knows. Unbelievable. In the same league. Playing against so many future Hall of Famers, Sacred Heart was out of its league. This is our 1972 team. This was Mike's first year. And this team was 0-9. If you look at the scores here in the yearbook, you can see that we never got into double digits. In that first year, we lost nine games. We never had the lead. We really took a beating. Well, we coached hard, and our players played like crazy. We had a 140-pound guy going against the 210-pound guy. Usually, it didn't work. This is our 1973 team. We actually played one more game, so we were 0-10. We did take the lead in one of the games that year. It's hard to believe, but the offensive mastermind who molded Brett Favre and shepherded Steve Mariucci, Andy Reid, John Gruden, and Mike Sherman into NFL head coaches could barely muster a touchdown at the high school level. 
Friends of mine still to this day ask me what kind of offense we ran, especially with an offensive wizard like Mike. Probably in the course of about three years, we probably ran every offense that there was possible because we were always looking for one that works. I see, I see like De La Salle runs the wing tee. Yeah. We did that. Yeah, yeah, we did it. We, we did, did that for a year. We did everything. Each offense yielded the same result. By 1974, Sacred Heart had lost 24 consecutive games and morale hit rock bottom. The streak was, uh, it was brutal. It was so tough to practice so hard every week, go out to the game and lose. You, you really thought you were jinxed or hexed. And you had this streak hanging over the team. People wondered if you would ever win a game. Some students would make remarks about it. The last two years have been very frustrating for the players and coaches, Holmgren wrote in Sacred Heart's yearbook. It would have been easy to give up, but they never did. Despite an endless string of losses, Holmgren never gave up on his players, even when he almost gave up on himself. I actually almost quit coaching and decided to do something else. Steve said, no, 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 come on, stay with this. Coming to Sacred Heart, spending two years losing, I think he probably began to evaluate, maybe football's not for me. Maybe it's time to move on to something else. And my feeling at the time was, you're too good a coach to do that. In every life, there are decisions that change everything. With Ellison's encouragement, Holmgren decided to stick with coaching. And in the fourth game of the 1974 season, something magical happened against Piedmont Hills. We got ahead of them 13 and nothing, and it went right down to the last play of the game, but we managed to hang on and we won, and the streak was over. I think it was 13 to 12. It, it was just unbelievable, the feeling of finally winning after all this hard work we put in. All the kids were crying. All the parents were crying. I mean, it was the biggest emotional mess you've ever seen. Finally winning a game sparked Holmgren's rise to the top of the coaching profession. To us. Document H is the article by Hinton Helper, the guy that we talked about. Ellison had chances to move up as well, but chose to follow his own path, which led 40 miles north of San Francisco to Petaluma High School. He's been there since 1977. You got him going seven. So you ever wonder what would it have been like? Oh, yes and no. I, I, I had a pretty good, good stay here. I have no Trade egg bowl for Super Bowl. Heck yeah, it's all relative. He made a difference in Mike Holmgren's life and reaches close to 100 students each day. I love running into former players and former students. I think what, what we do as teachers is pretty darn important, and, and, and I'm very proud of being a teacher. Good evening and welcome to the high school football game of the week. Steve Ellison, Petaluma Trojans getting set to take on the El Molino Lions. Showtime. Big night, guys. The days seem pretty far back when he was the head coach and his assistant was Mike Holmgren. He's been the head coach there 30 plus years. Yeah! Woo yeah! And is really one of the high school legends now in the San Francisco Bay Area. When I think of all the young people he's touched over his career, it's a wonderful profession. Ellison's old assistant hasn't stopped teaching either. I guess we stay with the play unless you see what. He's just working in a different classroom. I'm a head coach in the NFL and I've been one for a while, but down deep, I'm a teacher. Valuable lesson on that play right there, man. Mike Holmgren and Steve Ellison both chose different paths through life. Kansas will come into the Union as a slave state. What do you expect on the first snap, coverage-wise, you think? But in the end, they would end up at the same destination, as teachers. <laughs>